Greetings, Warriors of Coradia. In this development update, we will have a look at some of the post-release highlights that were introduced in the current live version 1.1.0, as well as our recent Steam beta version 1.2.0. To start, let's jump right into our new scene additions. We have introduced an additional 6 battle terrains, bringing the total to 76 unique battle scenes. They are accessible at the following locations. West of Reveal, Southwest of Kuyaz, three terrains northeast of Razi, and one around the town of Odok. Similarly, bandit hideouts now come in greater variety, with four new scenes that span desert, forest, seaside, and mountain environments. To help you clear out those hideouts with ease, we also added three new armor pieces, ornate scale armor, Khan's coat of plates, and Khan's plated bracers. We have introduced rain and snow weather effects to both world map and missions. These occur depending on the season of a specific region. Consequently, the grounds become wet or snowy and this lingers for a period even after the precipitation is gone. This not only enhances the overall atmosphere of the game, but adds a lot of variety to the map and all of the scenes. But that's not all. Wet or snowy grounds, noticeably decreased mounted infantry and cavalry party speed bonuses. They also doubled the siege preparation time. As a result, winter campaigns should now prove to be more challenging. Moving on to the missions, wet or snowy grounds reduce the maximum speed and acceleration of mounts. And finally, if it happens to be actively raining or snowing, that reduces the speed of arrows and bolts resulting in reduced damage and accuracy of archers and crossbowmen. Joining the already present Vlandian, Betanian and Empire voiceovers, you can now experience distinctive voices when interacting with individuals of the Asurai, Kuzate and Sturgeon heritage. Siege engine sounds have also been revamped, so let me quiet down while you listen to the trebuchets and mangonels rain terror on those defenders. In version 1.1.0, we introduced a fog of war mechanic to our encyclopedia. This meant that the information was no longer universally available, but would require you to meet characters or scout settlements to see their critical information. Our recent beta builds upon this foundation by introducing new methods of unveiling the masked details. Taking into account community feedback, we have added the ability to pay the tavern keeper to learn more about a settlement's clan. At the same time, we have also integrated existing features with the system, asking the tavern keeper about companions, receiving a marriage offer from another clan, or asking a lord about eligible bachelors, now all unlocks the information of these characters in the encyclopedia. Marriage offers in particular also benefit from a new screen that does the occasion greater justice. Sally out ambush missions have been added. Sharpen your blades, wear your best armor, mount your steed and rush out of the settlement under siege with your cavalry, ambushing the attackers and destroying their siege engines in the process. But take note of time, for as the enemy realizes what is happening, they'll send reinforcements to protect their siege towers and other equipment. Siege landers can now be pushed off the walls in both single player and multiplayer, even if there are troops on the ladder already. Picture this, you're in the middle of a violent siege, eager to jump the walls, and just as you're about to ascend, the defenders push the ladder back with a few of your comrades in arms falling to their demise. A shocking scene that must have been fairly common in medieval sieges. We reworked the melee AI to make agents fight less recklessly and increase the duration of combat. The changes include a decrease of attack frequency, always blocking when within enemy strike range, and a faster target re-evaluation when hit by another enemy. Troops now also detect the risk of becoming surrounded and attempt to escape such situations. Finally, additional logic has been added to preemptively raise the shield when running towards an enemy that's preparing to shoot a projectile at them. Ranged units were not ignored either. They no longer approach the enemy unnecessarily during a charge. Instead, they get in range and open fire until they'll run out of munition. They also reposition if their view is obstructed by a friendly agent or a tree. 
The overall targeting system was refined to improve situations where agents would prioritize the player despite having better targets. This benefits melee, mounted and ranged troops. Cavalry AI likewise saw changes to its aiming and movement systems. Mounted troops now try to attack the body part that deals the most damage, consider their weapon reach to pick an attack direction, and have a greater tendency to couch lances. All of these result in increased accuracy against stealth targets, reduced movement quirkiness, and better effectiveness during a full charge. And to help you unleash your own strategic brilliance, we added formation targeting. Using charge or engage orders, you can now choose between general attacks and prioritizing a specific enemy formation as a target. This is done by simply looking at enemy formations and issuing the order when their icon is highlighted. The charge order has your units individually rush towards the fight. The engage order, on the other hand, will see your troops advance towards the enemy in an orderly formation. Ranged units will also seek to keep their distance until they have spent their ammunition. For now, this feature will offer you a host of new tactical choices in single player, but we intend to explore it for multiplayer in the future as well. Auto battle calculations have likewise been revisited. Mission and terrain types provide positive and negative effects for attackers and defenders. For example, an attacking horse archer on flat terrain now has a large bonus, but if you throw him into the forest, it turns into a significant penalty. Defending archers do great in a siege, while attacking ones receive a penalty, and so on. In addition, the number and tier of perks with the captain effect that an army or party leader has now also impacts the bonus given to all of the troops under their command. Kingdoms that lose all of their thieves no longer linger until all of their nobles are killed or defect. Instead, they are destroyed. The kingdom's clans will become independent, inheriting its diplomatic stances. Over time, they will join available kingdoms or wither away if they fail to do so for more than 4 weeks. Workshops received an upgrade. Warehouses enable you to provide your workshops with raw resources to use in their production cycle. They also allow you to collect processed goods from them. This creates a new gameplay loop for all you traders out there. You can buy cheap raw materials, bring them to your workshop and sell the processed products to a settlement where you can sell them for a high profit. You can manage your warehouses through the clan screen, determining which inputs should be used and which outputs should be stored. Have you always wanted to take over an alley and set up a crime gang? Well, now you can. Alleys can be found in towns where gang leaders hold control of common areas. After clearing out the thugs that occupy it, you can assign a suitable rogue companion to gather gold and bandit recruits. However, this will also generate crime rating. Mind you, this is not a set it and forget adventure. Your alley is not immune to trouble and can be attacked by neighboring gang leaders. So make sure to leave some troops and help them defend it when the time comes. Prepare yourself for some multiplayer mayhem, because we've added a feature that's bound to spice up your experience. Taunts. Do you want to express your gratitude for a GG duel? Bow gracefully like a noble knight. Feeling a little sassy? Crumble to the floor in disappointment. Want to admit defeat? Surrender to the master on the other side of the screen. You can acquire a total of 32 different animations with loot but only 6 can be equipped at once via the armory. The dedicated custom server helper module has been merged into the base game, allowing you to download scenes from dedicated servers by default. Switching to consoles, the birth and aging settings will be available with version 1.2.0 on consoles too. We have also added 15 different cheats. They can be enabled through the campaign options or by holding the left bumper, right trigger and d-pad down. Please note that you will disable achievements by enabling cheats. Console gamepad support has been extended with a variety of additional haptic feedback such as new vibrations during combat and campaign. 
Using PlayStation 5 and a DualSense controller, you can also feel the tightness of the bowstring when releasing an arrow due to the added support for adaptive triggers. We have added a new option that allows you to aim and control your attack direction with the integrated gyroscope by rotating the controller. Available also on the PlayStation 4 gamepad, sounds of impacts, horse riding and more come directly from the controller speaker, getting you more immersed in the gameplay. PS4 saves can now be migrated to PS5. First, download the save data through the cloud or import it via a USB. Then, use the main menu option to use the PS4 save. On the topic of modding, we continue to collaborate closely with our amazing modding community, assisting where we can. You can find the link to the many modding related changes in the description down below. Thank you for powering through this chunky development update video with us. We hope that you enjoyed the new changes. Links to the full patch notes can be found in the video description. And as always, we invite you to share your feedback with us in the comment section down below. See you in the next one. Less talking, more reading! <laughs>